from the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, it's the Cube covering HoshoCon 2018. Brought to you by Hosho. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live here at HoshoCon in Las Vegas, the first security conference for blockchain. It's an inaugural event and we're here with Gabriel Shepard, VP of Strategy, a global strategy for Hosho. They're the host of the event, although it's an industry conference for the entire community all coming together. Gabriel, thanks for coming on and spending the time. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for uh, you know, supporting the event and we appreciate your team coming out and covering what we're trying to build here. Well, we think it's super important. Obviously, you guys are doing a great service for the industry in stepping up and putting the event together, and so props to you guys. Thank you. This is not a host show sales like conference. You guys aren't selling anything. You're doing a service for the community, so props to you guys great. and the team. Yeah. Uh, great stuff, and we know this is a kernel of all the smartest people, and it's really an industry event, so it shows in the session, so appreciate that. Yes. We think it's important because you know, we see a lot of trends. The Cube has a unique advantage in how we cover hundreds of events, and yep. so we get to go, we see a lot of horizontal observation space in the industry, and when you have formation like this with the community, um, this is important. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have up-leveled the conversation, focused the conversation around blockchain where security is the top-level conversation. Sure. That's it, no ICO pitches. Right. So for the folks watching, this is really one of those events where it's not a huge number of people here, like the thousands and thousands of other uh, blockchain shows that make money off events. This is about community and around getting the conversations and having substantive conversations. So sure. great job. Thanks. So for the folks watching, the content agenda is super uh, awesome, hostshowcon.com, you can go browse it, but give us some color commentary on some of the types of speakers here, the diversity. Yeah, I think, I, I think the, the first thing that we wanted to accomplish was, with HoshoCon was we, we wanted to put front and center the conversations that were not taking place at other events. There are plenty of platforms and opportunities for companies, early stage companies to go pitch. There are other great conference organizers that do events and have their own wheelhouse. But what we wanted to do was put together a conference that was focused around a type of conference that we ourselves would want to attend as a cybersecurity firm. And you know, after traveling the world, I mean, you know, you, you've, you, you and Hartej have spoke many times and Hosho has, has sponsored quite a few events around the world. After attending, by the end of 2018, we'll attend something like 100 plus events in some capacity. And so it was clear to us early on that companies weren't, or conferences weren't going to focus on security or at least put them on the main stage where I believe that they should be at least with all the hacks happening. So what we wanted to do was bring together thought leadership with respect to security, technical leadership with respect to developers and security engineers, and we wanted to bridge those two. What I mean by that is we wanted thought leadership that could get executives to start thinking, non-technical people, to start thinking about security in the larger format and how it's applicable to their company. But what we also wanted to do is we wanted to connect these non-technical people with the technical people in an intimate setting where they could learn. Think about the brain power that we have in this uh, hotel for, for HoshoCon. Yeah. You've got the minds of Andreas Antonopoulos, Diego Zaldiar of RSK, Michael Perklin of Shapeshift, Yosub Kwan of Hosho, you've got Ron Stone from C4, you've got Anam Prakash, a world-class white hat uh, a bug bounty hunter. Consider one of, he's top five bug bounty hunter for, or top, top bug bounty hunter for Facebook five years in a row. The, the level of, or the caliber of technical talent in this building has the potential to solve problems that enterprise has been trying to solve individually for years. But those conversations don't take place in earnest with the non-technical people. And so the idea behind HoshoCon was to bridge those two, provide education. That's why we're doing things like workshops. Sure, we have keynotes and panels, but we also yeah. have the ability to teach non-technical people how to enable two-factor authentication. How to set up PGP mm -hmm. for your email how to set up your hardware wallet. These things aren't, these conversations yeah. are not I mean, taking it's, place. It's, it's, the bridge is clearly established. We interview people from on the compliance side all the way down to uh, custodial services, which again, the diversity, this is not a group think event, just giving yeah. you more props here because I think you guys did a great job worthy of promotion because you not only bridge the, the communities together, you're bringing people in cross-functionally, cross-pollinizing, yeah. and the, the acid test for me is simple. 
a group think event is when everyone's kind of rah-rahing each other. Yeah. No, no, this, can, this good conversations. We got Andrea saying, hey, if you put database, substitute database for blockchain and it reads well, it's not a real revolutionary thing. And oh, all you custodian services, you're screwed. <laughs> I mean, so you have perspectives on both sides. That's right. And this contentious conversations. That's right. And that to me, proves it, and as well as the sessions are highly attended. Sure, we don't want, to, we don't want a panel of everybody in agreement because we know that's not reality. I mean, that you, you bring up the issue of, of, of custody. A prime example is we had a great talk, a four-person panel led by Joe Kelly, who's the CEO of Unchained Capital. He had a panel with a traditional a a equities uh, custodian, Paul Pui from uh, Edge Wallet, Yosef Kwan, who's the CEO uh, of Hosho, and there was clear differences of opinion with respect to custody, and it got a little contentious. But isn't that the point? Yeah. It's to have these conversations in earnest, and let's put them out in the public on what's right and what's wrong for the community, and that, let the community decide the best way forward. That's, a, that's exactly what you want to do. I got to ask you, what are the big surprises for you? What have you learned? What's the big uh, reveal for you that you've surprised you, or things you expected? What were some of the things that went on here? Yeah, I think the biggest surprise to me was the, the positive feedback that we received. You know, uh, I, I understand that you know people maybe looked at Hosho Khan year one and said, Hosho, like they're a cybersecurity firm. What are they doing running a conference, right? But my background is, uh, you know, I've produced conferences. I'm a former employee of South by Southwest. I believe a big an experience. And so when we started to put this together, um, we thought we knew we would make mistakes, and we certainly made. mistakes mistakes with respect to programming and schedule and just things that we had didn't think about, attention to detail. But we had planned so far in uh, that the mistakes were mitigated that they weren't exposed to the public, right? They're behind yeah. the scenes fires. It's that kind of like a wedding or a yeah, party. They're, they're behind you the notice scenes the details, fires. but no one actually really notices. Sure, we put them out behind the scenes. Nobody, the, the, our guests don't notice, and yeah. that was my biggest concern. I'm pleasantly surprised at the positive feedback. We've yet to get any negative feedback publicly on Twitter, Telegram, anecdotally, uh, individually people. Now, they may just be, be nice to my face, but I feel good about yeah. what the, the, the response that we've gotten. It's been good vibes here, so I got to ask you about, obviously the DJs were great last <laughs> Thank you. Good, Thank you. good experience. Yeah. Experience and uh, knowledge and, and networking has been a theme too. Correct. Talk about some of the networking dynamics. I saw a lot of people, I had, I had ran into some people I met for the first time. Uh, we've had great outreach that yep. with the cubes integrated in. Yep. People are very friendly. Talk about the networking that's been going on here. Yeah, I mean, um, this, uh, Panels are great, I love to hear from, from, from panels and solo presentations, but a lot of work gets done in the hallways. And we have a saying in the conference business, hallway hustlers, right? The ones that are hustling in the hallways are those early stage entrepreneurs who are trying to close deals, trying to figure out how to get in front of the right person, serendipitously are at the bar at the same time as somebody they want to meet. That is, to me, Conference 101. That is the stuff I yeah. grew up on. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we were encouraging those interactions um, through traffic flow. So you'll notice that they're strategically, the content rooms are strategically placed so that when you're changing rooms, people are forced to cross interact with each other because they're forced to bump into each other. Yeah. And if you look at the programming, we purposefully to our demise, to be honest, year one, put a lot of programming that was conflicted with each other. We made people make a decision about what talk they wanted to go to because there were two really compelling people at the same time or 10 minutes off. Yeah. And so you had to make a decision. You had to vote with your feet. You got to vote with your feet. And, and, and from a conference perspective, we call that FOMO, right? We want our guests to FOMO, not because we want them to miss a particular talk, but because we want them to be so overwhelmed with content and opportunity with networking that they, when they walk away, they've had a good experience, they're fulfilled, yeah. but they, they think I got to go back year two because that thing I missed, I'm not going to miss this. Yeah, I will point out too, you guys made a good call on filming uh, all the sessions. Everything. So everything's going to be online, we'll help Correct. you guys do that. Yep. So the video's going to be available for everyone to look on demand. You also had some good broadcast here, we had a couple shows, the Cube's been here, you have multiple. Yeah. You mentioned multiple the DJs, films. yeah. Yeah, so good stuff. So okay, hallway conversations or lobby con as we call it, uh, when people are hanging lobby out in the con, lobby, like lobby well. con is always good, hallway con. So what, uh, Gabriel, in your mind, as you walked around, what were some of the hallway conversations that you overheard and, and that you thought were interesting, and what hallway conversations were you personally involved in? <laughs> um, the personal conversations I was involved with is, why isn't somebody not at this station? Why is someone not guarding this door? <laughs> but I will tell you, I, from what I heard from, from conference attendees, the conversations that I heard taking place were, um, and I hope Jonathan doesn't mind, but Jonathan Nelson from Hack Fund um, spoke on our main stage, um, and I hope he doesn't mind me speaking out of turn, but he, he, he came to me and said, this is one of the best run blockchain conferences I've ever been to. And 
to have somebody like Jonathan say that, who, who's done hundreds of talks, if not thousands, um, was really meaningful. But, but what was more important is to talk to him and him feel comfortable enough to sit down with me and yeah. just talk generally. Yeah. Right, that's the vibe we want for, uh, for, for every attendee. We want you to feel comfortable meeting with people yeah. in the hallway who you've never met and be vulnerable from a security perspective. Like, you know, M Michael Turpin, for example, sitting down and talking uh, proactively about being the, the AT&T hack, right? These are opportunities for people to really talk about what's happened and be vulnerable and have the opportunity to educate us all how to get better as an industry. You know, the other thing I want to get your thoughts on is obviously, um, the program's been phenomenal on the content side. Thank you. But community is really important. Yeah. We have a community model to Cube. You guys care about the community aspect of this. Sure. And as an inaugural event, you want to have an ongoing year after year, uh, and hopefully it will get bigger. I think it will based yeah. on the results we're seeing. Um, talk about the community impact, because what you're really talking about there is community. That's right. Well, I mean, Vegas, we talk about, there's, there's multiple communities, right? Regionally, Hosho is a Vegas-based company. We are born here, uh, we, we close, I think 40 some employees all based here in Las Vegas, uh, which is our home. So the first thing that we did with respect to community is we created a local, uh, uh, a local price. If you're a Nevada resident, we, we didn't want you to have to invest a significant amount of money to come to something in your own town. The second thing we did is we invited the local uh, Vegas Bitcoin meetup and Ethereum meetups to come and partake. And not only participate, but contribute to the content and opening day. In fact, there was so much uh, influx of people from those meetups, uh, it wasn't a it wasn't like a program where we had actual AV tech set up. I thought it was going to be like a meetup. There were so many people that attended, we had to on the fly provide AV because we were overwhelmed with the amount of people that showed up. So that was a, that's a regional community. But with respect to this, the community from blockchain community, um, what we wanted to do was make sure we brought people of all ethnicities, all countries. We have 26 countries represented in the first blockchain security conference. And you had some big names, celebrities here. Yeah. Uh, Neil Kittleson, Max Kaiser, yep. Igo Okomama, uh, yep. Anand Prakash, Josh, yep. Yakov Berensky, yep. uh, Alex Blair from your side, pa yep. uh, Pavel Kranchenko, Kranchenko, yeah. Kranchenko yeah. Uh, some big names. Yeah. And obviously Andreas yes. uh, here, keynoting. Yeah, and Michael Perklin, Andreas, uh, Diego Zaldivar, I mean, uh, these are, uh, Alina, v Alina Vironova, I mean, these are big names. Yeah, these are big yeah. names. Okay, what's, yeah. so, so what's your takeaway as you, as you my, look back? My, my takeaway is that there's a, there's a yearning for this type of event. My, my takeaway is that we're doing something right um, we have the luxury as Hosho in that we're not an events company. People think that might be a disadvantage to run a conference, or you're not, a, you're not an event company. I think it's an advantage. Yeah. Because it holds my feet to the fire yeah. much closer than an event organizer who doesn't have a company reputation and brand to protect. Yeah. Hosho, as you know, has a good brand in the, in the cybersecurity world with respect to blockchain. We don't have the luxury of throwing a poor event. Yeah. giving you a bad experience, because that would tarnish Hoso's brand. Well, also, you're in the community too, so you're going to have direct we feedback. Have That's right. And the other thing too, I will say, I mean, we go to a lot of events, and there are people who are in the business of doing events, and they have a profit motive. That's right. So they'll, they'll lanyards are all monetized, everything's monetized, yep. and that sometimes takes away from the community aspect. Correct. And I think you guys did a good job of you know, not being profligate on the event. Obviously you want to yep. make a little bit of cash, but you didn't over, yep. over focus on money making and yeah. grinding people right. uh, for the cash. You really right. made it about the content yeah. and the experience for and with the community. And I think yes. that's a formula that people want. Yeah, I, I would like to see the model, I would like to see the model changed over time, if I'm being honest. A majority of crypto conferences today are pay to play, so a lot of the content you're getting is sponsored. Um, so, I'm okay with that, but I think it should be delineated between content you need disclosure, and sponsored you need content. Disclosure, you don't want Correct. to water down the content but the, but program. The, but, the, but the conference circuit in crypto is not ready for that. It hasn't, reached, in my opinion, hasn't reached that level of maturation yet. Like I told you, I, I'm a former South by Southwest guy. That, like, my belief is you create the content and the sponsors will come. I don't, I don't begrudge conference organizers for, for, for sponsoring out events because they're really, really expensive. A cost per attendee. And there's are demand, there's demand to this hype out there. Yeah, hundreds of dollars per attendee are the cost. I get it, I understand why they do it. But what I would like to see is the model change over time, where as, as we get more sophisticated as a technology uh, space, we're, we should also grow as an event and conference uh, circuit as well. What I mean by that is, let's change the model that eventually someday it's free for all attendees to come. 
And those conferences and the costs associated with them are subsidized by companies that want access to the people that are attending them. It sounds like an upstream open source project. Sure, of I course. I mean, that's how open source yeah. became Absolutely. so popular. Right. You don't screw with the upstream, yep. but you have downstream opportunities, so yeah. if you create a nice upstream model, yep. that's the CUBE philosophy as well. We totally agree with you, and I think you guys are onto something pioneering with the event. I Thank think that you. you're motivated to do it. The community needs it. Yeah. I think that's ultimately the self-governing aspect of it. I think you're onto something really good, co-creation, yeah. uh, obviously we believe in that, yeah. uh, and the results speak for themselves. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys coming here and investing your time, and yeah. I hope that all our staff has been accommodated and the Hard Rock has treated you well. You guys have been great, very friendly, but I think again, you know, outside of you guys as a great company and great brand, and you guys, and it speaks for itself and the results, this is an important event. Agreed. Because of the timing, because of the security focus, it's crypto, it's crypto revolution, it's cybersecurity and FinTech all kind of coming together through huge global demand. Right. I mean, we haven't got into IOT and supply chain, yep. all the hacks going on with, yep. with China and these things being reported. This is serious business, there's a right. lot on the line. There's a lot. And you guys having a clear focus on that is really a uh, uh, service for society. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for doing it. All right. Our CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas for HoshoCon. This is the first conference of its kind where security is front and center. It is the conference for security and blockchain, bringing the worlds together, building the bridges and building the community bridges as well. We love that, that's our belief as well as the CUBE coverage here in Vegas. Stay with us for more after this short break.